Thank you so much for having me. The talks this morning have been phenomenal. Um, these are my disclosures. I am a consultant for multiple companies. And I'm just going to try and go over the current state of BPH, where we are, what we're looking at down the road. And it's already been stated this morning, but you know, medical management has really moved in and replaced surgical management for a lot of uh, men, starting in the 2000s up to the 2000 teens. Um, and you know, the prevalence of BPH is extremely high. And by 2060, the number of Americans over 65 will nearly double. So we have to have a better way to management. Uh, and currently, medical management is not working that well. So about 9% of men will discontinue their medications. 35% uh, of men would rather be on observation than medication, and only 1% actually elect surgical intervention. So this is a big market. And MIST has really moved in to try to swoop in and take over some of that medical management and those men that are electing observation. Because of that, the guidelines are crazy. So it's very difficult for a patient to understand this, uh, let, uh, even a physician to understand this. And there's no way that you can go through all these steps with any patient in 15 minutes. Uh, so a lot of times we just pick something and go with it. And patients, physicians, and the system are demanding for an ambulatory procedure. They want a durable treatment. They want low complication rates. They want low cost. They don't want the catheter in. And oh, by the way, keep my ejaculation. Like it's a very long laundry list of what we're trying to deliver. And that's what MIST is trying to do. So with MIST, you know, it's not really been around that long if we exclude microwave. So microwave was the infancy of MIST. Now we have Eurolift that was introduced in 2013. We have Resume 2015, I-10 2020. And they have taken up about 35% of the marketplace as of 2019. So they cut into basically ablation. They took the ablation patients and the TERP patients and the medication patients out of that barrel. So what's driving this rapid growth of the missed therapies? They're all around us. And really it's the acceptable three to five year outcomes. We have increased availability due to the ambulatory nature. You don't have to schedule OR time. You can do it in the office. Um, physicians and hospitals are getting compensated very well for doing these procedures. And men have really glommed on to the importance of saving their ejaculation. So it's made these um, treatments highly marketable. However, studies of ejaculation uh, sparing procedures are kind of interesting. So this study was done on 102 men out of Minnesota, and they surveyed them and their uh, partners to determine the importance of saving your ejaculation. And 55% of men felt that it was uh, very strongly about preserving their ejaculation, while only 30% of the partners did. Uh, furthermore, 68% would support a procedure that um, required loss of ejaculation if it meant improvement of their BPH. Only 10% of the partners disagreed with a procedure that would uh, take away ejaculation. So now this is kind of the continuum of ejaculation sparing. So, you know, the early data showed that there was no change in ejaculation except maybe a slight decrease in volume for Eurolift, Resume, and ITIND. I think we're seeing that some men do lose their ejaculation, but it's a small percentage. You have PAE at around 20 to 40 percent. TERP and hole up, you should tell them you're losing your ejaculation um, because that's pretty much a guarantee for most men. So the guidelines recommend Eurolift and, and uh, Resume for ejaculation sparing procedures for men. We also have to think about acceptable outcomes though, and the retreatment rates with these procedures are high. So this is only US data. If we incorporated in European data, the numbers would be higher. So we have about a 13% surgical retreatment rate with Eurolift, with medication also at about 10%. Resume is around 5% and 11%, and we only have one year data on ITIND. Uh, compare that to the 1% or 2% for HOLUP at 10 years, and the 12% for TERP at 8 years, which is older data when we were doing a lot more TERPs. 
Um, also, you have easier adaptability, learning curve for Urolift, resume, aqua ablation. Um, you know, that's, you're talking around five, 10 cases. Uh, in the aqua ablation trials, uh, the mean number done was four. With hold up, you're really looking at 25 to 50. So you're putting a lot more into these surgical therapies. Um, and you're also expecting a different anesthetic. Urolift, I-10, resume can be done in the office. Aqua ablation, hold up, terp, you have to do it in the the OR. So when you look at the Medicare numbers on number of procedures, the top line is uh, whole, uh, is TERP, right? So it's by far and away still the number one procedure performed. But this red line that goes up and crosses TERP, that's reimbursement for Eurolift. So the U.S. government is dumping tons of money into these procedures that have a higher retreatment rate. And when you plug this into a cost-benefit analysis based on symptom improvement versus cost, if you do a surgical intervention such as TERP or green light, um, whole up would also be on that side, you're gonna have greater improvement, but it's gonna be a much higher cost. Economically, the worst way to go is medication because you have less improvement, much higher cost, and in the middle is the missed therapies. So we're gonna see so many more missed therapies in the next five to 10 years. And I just wanted to highlight one of the current therapies, which was the Pinnacle study on Optilum. So they had men over 50, prostates 20 to 80 grams, and uh, they were randomized to either Optilum or Sham. And this was like highly touted as a very successful study. But you need to, notice that the sham patients had a significant improvement in their symptoms. There's a 2.5 uh, diff point difference between the Optilum results and the sham results. So if you're going to use these uh, interventions, just let your patients know that it's not meant to last 20 years. You may have to have a retreatment, but you will spare your ejaculation, and most men are fine with that. But if they're okay with losing their ejaculation and they want something that's gonna last forever, then we really need to move into the surgical therapies. And if you look at the retreatment what rates with MOLAP or simple prostatectomy, you're really not going to retreat these patients unless it's an unusual situation. The TERP retreatment rates have gone up significantly. So, you know, I said 12% at eight years. We're seeing seven to 8% retreatment rate at two years, and it's because we're not training our residents on how to do a TERP. So they don't do TERPs well anymore. And PAE, we all know PAE has a high retreatment rate. Stepping into the market to help with this, uh, to overcome learning curve, is things like simple prostatectomy. So uh, robotic simple prostatectomy single port has really been popularized, and um, you know, I think it is a good option. People are familiar with the Da Vinci platform. You can do a simple prostatectomy. The problem is it's single port surgery, and that requires a lot of skill, just like a whole up. And when we compare outcomes between robotic prostatectomy, whole up, and simple prostatectomy, uh, we can see that if you can just take the time to master whole up, you're gonna have less blood loss, less transfusion rates, shorter catheterization rates, shorter hospitalization rates. So you, you know, if you're gonna spend the time to learn single port, you should just spend the time to learn whole up. And people are doing that. So we've seen a doubling of whole up from 2016 to 2019. We've seen green light kind of drop off the platform. And we've also seen the TERPs go up. So people are going back to true surgical intervention. With whole up, the catheterization rate is actually shorter than resume, mirrors that of your lift, shorter than aqua ablation, and shorter than PAE if a patient has to have a catheter in. We can get the catheter out the same day for a lot of patients undergoing whole up, if not the same day, then the next day. So when you talk about cost effectiveness, if you want to look out past one year, whole up wins the long race. Um, so if, if a man is really okay with losing his, his ejaculation and wants something that's going to last, he really should be looking at an enucleation procedure. So in conclusion, the rapid uptake of mist is going to continue in the United States, and I think it really requires appropriate counseling of patients and selection. 
you're doing the mist because you want to minimize loss of ejaculation, understanding that you're going to have a retreatment rate. Um, and it's really driven by multiple factors, availability, teachability, um, reimbursement, and patient desires. We are going to continue to see an ongoing steady growth in HOLUP in the U.S. because the outcomes are so good, and we're making hands-on courses like today more available. And I think we're going to see a bigger decline in green light as we move forward. Thank you.